Yeah, so this is me, Brett Cobley. I'm a vegan chef. Um, my Instagram account is also Brett Cobley, and I make tasty vegan food to help people make the transition from what they're eating every day, which is usually dead animals on a plate, to a vegan diet. Um, part of what I've done over the last few years is I was recently on ITV uh, on a program called The Big Audition. And the great thing about that was there was eight chefs all competing to win a contract on ITV. And uh, I was the only vegan on there. And I ended up winning. And the crazy thing about that was the fact that the response, <laughs> a few little claps there. The, the response from that was that they said to me at the end of the program, they were giving me some feedback. Um, and they said, yeah, the thing we really liked is that you weren't preachy. They said, you weren't a preachy vegan. We were kind of, when they said you were going to be vegan, we expected you to be really preachy, to kind of like be a shamer and all these different things. And they said, but you didn't do that. They said, and then when you came in and you spoke about veganism, you were so vibrant and passionate and it was so heartfelt that it felt like almost like a religious experience. And I was like, what, like a preacher? They're like, yeah, kind of. And I was like, okay, so I'm kind of preachy. But um, last year I came to Vevolution and I spoke about building bridges. And it was all about building bridges for me because it was all about how to communicate a message to people that might not be on that wave yet. They might not be yet thinking about going vegan and uh, they, yeah, they might not be considering it yet, might not even be in their line of vision. And when you meet these people and when you speak to these people, there's a lot of pressure on you to have the conversation in the right way. Um, and a lot of people are expecting you're just going to throw some fake blood at them and run out the room. And instead, you've got to have a really good heartfelt conversation. You've got to talk about the positives and you've also got to talk to people on a level that they can understand and appreciate. And you've also got to recognize where people are on their journey at that time. So recently I was in London, where I now live, and I was surrounded by the people of Extinction Rebellion. I was there taking some photos of two ladies that had chained themselves together on a road. And I was walking side to side, kind of getting in the way of the police a little bit so they couldn't arrest them yet. And I was just getting in the way, taking photos, getting in the way a little bit until I got warned enough times that I was going to get arrested and I just stepped to the side. Um, and I thought to myself, how have I gone from who I used to be to now? When I gave that talk last year, I was talking about building bridges. I was talking about the moment when I went vegan. And it made me think, actually, I'm a big believer in something called determinism. And for those who don't know, determinism is most simply explained by thinking about, if you think about a snook table or a pool table, if you know all the variables that go into the pool table, if you know the coefficient of friction on the table, if you know all the angles of how you're going to hit the ball, you could calculate from the moment of striking that ball where all the balls on the table are going to end up, right? And I think of life the same way. We're all born in completely different circumstances. You know, that's where privilege comes from. That's why um, I need to understand my privilege as a white male. I need to understand where I'm coming from and the privileges that have been afforded to me in society. And also to know that if I'm standing in the way of people that are about to get arrested, uh, police might actually treat me different because of the type of person I am. And I need to appreciate that. But it, it actually makes me think also every single person got to this moment where they bought tickets to Vevolution and they wanted to come and hear new, mu uh, hear new news and hear from inspiring individuals and they needed to be in a frame of mind where they actually wanted to hear those thoughts and I needed to be in that frame of mind where I needed to hear about veganism. Everyone talks about the time when they get the first vegan message that actually makes them go vegan. So everyone says, I watch this documentary. I watch, you know, new people are like, I watch Game Changers or people are like, I watch What the Health or Cowspiracy. Uh, for me, it was 101 reasons to go vegan. And they talk about that and then they're like, from that moment on, I was vegan. But actually, we're much more complex than that. We need to get ourselves to a frame of mind where we're ready to hear the message. And that led me to think, why am I vegan? What actually changed within my life to make me vegan? And when I was standing at Extinction Rebellion, I put a post up and it was this. Perfection's impossible, but change, change is crucial. Um, I thought about those words a lot because, you know, every animal that's ever gone extinct, you think of the dinosaurs, that's a common one. It's always some change that occurs that wipes out a species. And I think we're the few animals that actually were the ones wiping ourselves out, we're the ones ruining it for ourselves. But we're all very complex individuals. And when you give people that message, you need to know where they're at on that journey. So this was at Extinction Rebellion, and 
me and Ed met this amazing guy who's really annoyed about everything that's going on at the moment. Um, and that was, you know, fantastic to get a picture with that guy. He's super annoyed. These are the ladies that I was talking about earlier that were chained themselves in the road um, and that were really making a stand for their cause. And also, um, you know, as, as Jack, who's incredibly inspiring, spoke about earlier, it is a, a, a privilege to kind of be one of those people who, you know, can actually put yourself into a position where you might be arrested um, and to actually be in a position in your life where you, you that's something you can actually do. But taking a stand is really important. Um, and I have so much respect for people like that who are doing it. So I looked at where it began for me. Um, a very fresh face, face, Brett Cobley up there. Um, and that's with uh, one of my best friends who now lives in Australia called Phil. And we're with a guy called Alejandro. Uh, he's from Argentina and we'd never met anyone from Argentina before. So we, we thought we needed a picture with him and we made him hold up his driving license to show exactly where he came from. And uh, this for me was actually the point where it all began. I was in uh, an engineering position. I worked for a company called JCB a long, long time ago. Feels like a previous life. I was sitting in my office and uh, my friend Phil came in. He was in quality. I was in manufacturing. And he said to me, what are you doing this summer? It was right at the end of the day, so we weren't talking work anymore. And uh, I said, actually, I've been thinking about it for a long time. I want to go to Italy and I want to take a train across Italy. I want to stop off at all these different destinations. I want to look at food and traveling culture. And I was like, it just feels like the time in my life to kind of mix it up and do something different. I was like, what are you doing? He was like, go to Ibiza again. And it was just like the third year in a row that had been Ibiza. And we started talking about it and he seemed really intrigued by it. But it was the end of the day, so we both went home. And that weekend, he messaged me and he said, will you meet me at the pub? And so we picked a, a pub that was like midway between both the houses and we met for a pint. And when I got there, he had an A4 sheet of paper and he had a map of Europe on it and he'd put all these dots and dashes and a complete destination of travel on this A4 sheet of paper. And he said, why don't we go interrailing? Let's go interrailing through Europe. These are all the stops that we can go on. It'd be a really great trip. And I'm a big yes man. So I was like, yes, let's do it. 100%. We got to the airport. And uh, I said to him, oh, have you got the tickets? Have you got the tickets for the train? And uh, he pulled out this sheet of paper and it was like a three quarters of a sheet of paper with a very ticket sized bit missing from the bottom of it. And I was like, have you got the actual tickets though? And he was like, damn it, I thought those were the tickets. So it started off really well. We didn't even have the tickets to go into Raylan and we set off around Europe. Landed in Rome and the first night in Rome, we actually woke up on the streets, both of us. We went out, we got absolutely hammered, um, and we got that drunk that we both woke up on the streets. It was so different and so far from where we are now, but I am that same person, and that was part of my journey, and that's the kind of mentality I was on. I was one of those typical Brits who goes abroad, gets absolutely hammered, and gives us all such a bad name. Um, and we did, we woke up on the streets, he lost his phone, I thankfully kept all my stuff on that occasion, but then the hectic journey began because we basically trip, treated it like a pub tour across Europe. We went to, uh, went to Rome, Munich, Prague, Barcelona, Valencia, and that's all we did on the whole trip. We just got drunk, but it actually started to open our eyes um, and we started to meet loads of different travelers. We met Alejandro in the first night and it's crazy to think we actually made him hold up his, his driving license to show that he was, he was Argentinian because we'd just never met anyone from pretty much outside the UK before. And to us, that was crazy. But now I've met so many people from all around the world, but I've got to actually keep taking a step back into the mentality that I was in at the time. I was definitely not ready to hear about things like climate change. And I wasn't ready to hear about a vegan journey at all. And this was literally just the beginning of it. When we completed our trip, uh, I want to say I'd love to put up loads and loads of pictures from the trip to show you how fun it was. It was a really fun trip and it was it was really great. It was really eye-opening. And trip is uh, the perfect word for it because it's so close to other things that you call trips because it was mind-altering and it was eye-opening. It definitely changed my life in lots and lots of ways, even though at the time we were acting incredibly responsible. Ir irresponsible. Um, I actually lost the camera for the trip. Um, because I woke up on a bench in Barcelona and uh, didn't have anything in my pockets anymore. And that's why we've got no pictures from the trip. Again, I'm just trying to be completely open about where I was at the time and the mentality. If someone had come up to me on that trip and just said, hey, you should go vegan, it's great for the animals, great for the environment, great for your health, I'd have been like, 
and I'm just not on that at all. Like, whatever you do, you, but I'm not on that. And we have to realise that people are on their different journeys at the moment and we need to reach people in every way we can. From that trip, my mum is quoted as saying, uh, you and Phil, it's like one of you has a really stupid idea and then the other one goes, no, that's not nearly stupid enough. Why don't we do this instead? Um, which I think actually sums up the trip, trip perfectly. But the trip was so altering for us both that when we got back home, Phil quit his job within six months and actually went traveling full term because he wanted to experience more of those life or in situations and he wanted to change his life more. I actually took another job. I moved to Liverpool. Um, so throughout that trip, seeds were planted, but that's all they were. They were, they were seeds. I'd not actually made the change. I'd not made the connections yet. And realistically, through that trip, the things that had made the changes were, was meeting people from different cultures, but also all of the hostels that we stayed in, they all had communal kitchens. And in the communal kitchens, we'd go in there, there'd be people cooking veggie food, because so many travelers go veggie on their travels. And there'd also be people talking about their effects on the environment, and they'd be talking about the politics of their countries. And it made me feel incredibly ignorant, because at that time, I'd never even looked at the politics of my own countries, uh, of my own country. I'd, I'd, definitely never looked at the politics and how complex it was across the world and I'd never looked at the way that diet affected the environment uh, and, and the health in general. So he went off traveling, I took a different job and I moved to Liverpool. In Liverpool I got introduced, again my, my world got a little bit broader and I got introduced to people who'd just come back from travels across the world and I also was next door neighbours with a, a veggie doctor um, and that was, that was really interesting to me because I'd only ever met one veggie person in my life and that was in year three and it was one of the teachers in year three. And I remember she was a super hippie and I can remember just thinking at the time, that's exactly what a vegan was. Every vegan I met from that point, that's what they were to me. They were, they were always going to be a hippie. Um, and obviously now you meet so many people and veganism is so diverse. But yeah, at the time that was, that was where my head was at. So I had this veggie doctor as a neighbor. I invited her over with her housemate, who's also a doctor, and I cooked them both a meal. So I cooked them both a veggie meal. And for me, I was like really impressed with myself. It was only veggie, it wasn't vegan, but I'd, I'd never cooked veggie in my life, not knowingly anyway. And I was really impressed with that, I had some nice conversations. But again, that was the seed getting watered a little bit. I still wasn't ready to go veggie or hear the message, but it definitely been watered. And I was definitely kind of opening and expanding my horizons a little bit more. Um, and the group of friends that I'd met, I started talking to the traveler. She'd recently gone veggie. And I later that year had a conversation with someone in a bar in Liverpool where I was actually on the opposite side of sanity. He'd recently gone vegan and I was opposite, arguing the opposite point. I was saying, how can you make your diet less diverse and be healthier? It doesn't make sense. And I just couldn't comprehend it at all. I was definitely on the opposite side of sanity there. Um, but again, it was another conversation. It was another stop. It was an, another building block to, act, to actually get me to the place that I'm at now. Um, I took a different job and I moved down to Birmingham and things changed again, but definitely for the worse. Looking, looking back on my life, moving to Birmingham was, um, it was the darkest chapter of my life. Uh, I, I basically, I'd, I'd taken a job that was a promotion, but it was something that was at the detriment of my health. Uh, my relationships and just time management in general. Everything that wasn't about the job just fell by the wayside. My friendships disappeared. Um, like relationships had no chance. Uh, and I messaged my friend Phil, who was off traveling. And I said, my insomnia has got that bad that the sound of my pulse in my head is making me want to kill myself. I said, all I can hear is the echo of my pulse and my eardrums. And I can't sleep and I can't sleep night after night. And all I'm thinking about is work. And I get up in the morning, I shower and I go to work and I just can't get it out of my head. And it, it just, it's just making me want to kill myself just to stop it and to rest. Um, and I knew I needed some help. I knew I needed to change the way I was living my life. And so I actually found a Buddhist center in Birmingham uh, where they just talk to people. They talk to people for free. You could go along, you could chat to people. And I went along and I chatted to a very nice lady. And um, we started talking about loads of different things. And I'd recently had a conversation with someone who I worked with um, where he'd watched a documentary. It was actually a show that was on, I think it was on BBC. And uh, they'd done blood tests on vegans and non-vegans. And uh, the vegans had come out really healthy. And I, at the time, said, again, you know, you can't make your, you could diet less diverse and actually get healthier. That doesn't make sense. Um, so I went to the source of all truth, Google, 
and I, uh, I looked, pros and cons of going vegan. And this video came up, 101 reasons to go vegan. And uh, it's a guy, correct me if I'm wrong, Bob, but it's James Wildman, right? And uh, James Wildman says to you, he, he, he does a Rorschach test at, the, at first, he lies to you. And then he also says, if you walk outside now, walk onto the streets, and you see someone hitting a dog with a baseball bat, how do you react? And I thought I'd lose my mind. I'm not gonna let someone hurt an animal, an innocent animal in front of me. That, that doesn't make sense. You can't let someone do that. And then he says, how would you react if it was a pig? I thought, why does that make any difference? I would still react the same way. I would stop the guy, I would call the police. I'd probably hurt the guy. Um, and I thought, wow, I'm a complete hypocrite. I'm eating meat, dairy, all these different things. And as long as someone else is doing it far away from me and I'm not being impacted in any way, I don't care. And that to me quickly made me make the connection that actually that's the root of all evil in our life. As long as we don't have to see what's going on, we, we don't really care about it. And that's what, you know, that was the same with all of the social injustices that have happened in life. As long as people didn't have to get their hands dirty themselves, they didn't really worry about it. Um, and I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to, I didn't want to be part of that myself. I remember another seed that was planted. I was in um, Liverpool and I went to a festival and a lady got up on stage and she said that in the Congo, every two days, as many people die from genocide as died in the Twin Towers. I remember standing there and I thought, I've never heard about that. And she says, I bet a lot of you are thinking you've never heard about that. I was thinking, yeah, I was. And she said, uh, yeah, it's because they're not, they don't look like me and you. Because they don't look like me and you, people don't care, it's not in the news, and it's something that happens all of the time. So because they don't look like me and you, and it's just happening consistently, people don't worry about it anymore, it's not news, but it's happening all the time, it's another injustice that's always happening. So I thought the same with, with animals, and I thought about the, the injustices that happen in the world. And for me, I thought I needed to make a change. Um, so I spoke to this lady in, in the Buddhist center in Birmingham and I said that actually I've just started eating a vegan diet and she said, why you done it? I explained all my reasons to her uh, and she said, that's, that's fantastic. But she also asked me about my job as well. She said, you know, why do you put all of your time and effort into your job? Why is that your whole life? Why is that all you focus on? Um, and I said, I just couldn't imagine it changing it it destroy me, it'd be horrible for that to end. I'm pushing, I'm striving to get to the next level all the time, I wanna get promoted, I wanna get to this point. I'd be the youngest, if I, got, if I get promoted one more time, I'd be the youngest person in the company in that position. She said, cool, like, you're gonna be happy then. I was like, I didn't think about that. Never thought about the happiness, never thought about kind of like satisfying anything within myself, I just thought about the goal orientation all the time. So I had this new change in my life and I had, um, a new vision of becoming a better, healthier me. And one of my friends also asked me to watch a documentary at the time. Has anyone ever seen the Minimalist documentary? Yeah. So it's a Minimalist documentary, it's on Netflix and it's called Minimalism, The Important Things in Life. And on there, I heard this guy called AJ Leon. If you remember him from the time, he had a, like a man bun, he's a good looking guy and he was uh, working at like a brokerage firm and he does an interview where they talk to him about his life and he says that he'd spent all of his 20s, he says wastes his 20s, which is exactly what I did, wastes his 20s, get into a position in the company where he was going to be made a partner. And he said that was his dream. He would earn an unbelievable amount of money. He'd be able to buy all of the things he ever wanted to buy and he could just be free and do all these different things. So when he got called into the office one day and his boss sat him down and he said, James, you're gonna be so happy to know we've made you a partner in the firm. He said, thank you very much, and he went back to his office, and he sat there and he cried. Because what he realized is, he'd been given all of the things that he ever wanted. He'd been given all of the things that he dreamed about, that he'd wanted over all these different years. But what he also realized is he made like a financial cage for himself. And that's definitely what I did. I made like a financial cage for myself. I, I was so focused on earning money, but all I was doing was money was coming in. It was going out the door and all these other expenses. I was buying a house that I couldn't afford. I was buying a car that I couldn't afford. I was doing all these things that trapped me. And when I watched AJ Leon talk about that and talking about going to his office and crying, I completely broke down and burst out crying watching the Minimalist documentary because I just couldn't believe how bad my mentality had been and how many mistakes I'd been making um, and it completely changed my life and it definitely watered that seed and made me change as a person. Just hearing him say that. 
a little bit more on that, I actually DM'd him only maybe a month ago. And I said, uh, hey, bro, by the way, I just wanted to let you know you changed my life by being on the Minimalist documentary. Uh, if you're ever in London, I'd love to cook for you. And uh, he said, thank you very much. I hear that a lot. I'll definitely let you know. I'll definitely uh, come eat some of your food. Um, and it's just amazing that him going on to that and talking about his life experience definitely changed my life. Since then, obviously, I went from making a change and not knowing what to eat as a vegan. Um, I was actually talking to the lady at the Buddhist center about it saying I've, I've made this change to veganism I think it's gonna be amazing for me but I've no idea what to eat and for the last two weeks before I've had this conversation with you I've been eating just fruit and nuts and uh, <laughs> since then I've bought out a book called what vegans eat to try and help people with that same transition um, and it's been an amazing journey just cooking food for people it's obviously a very emotional subject for people but the whole point of this talk is to just say that you in the audience are just like all of those people that I spoke to on my journey. You are kind, compassionate people trying to change the world and trying to make a difference. And you can be the change in someone else's life. And you might have some incredibly frustrating conversations with people on a day-to-day -day basis. I had one literally just last week um, where a guy told me that uh, a guy he knows wife got cancer and it was because of soy, so veganism's bad. And I was like, really? They did a biopsy and they said, there's a soybean in there, that's exactly what did it. And he's like, no, but she was eating soy and she got cancer. And I was like, that isn't how medicine works. But that's a very, very like frustrating conversation to have someone. And you can go away from a conversation like that feeling completely distraught and feeling like you're banging your head against a brick wall and these people never wanna learn, never wanna listen, never wanna know but you are planting a seed or you're watering seeds that are already there. You are making a change all the time. And whether you're someone who's chaining yourself to a bus or chaining yourself across the road or making documentaries or whatever you're doing, or whether you're just going to a nine to five job in your daily life and you're sitting with people and you're talking about the way you live your life and you're being kind and compassionate, you are making a difference and you are planting those seeds and you are making a change in people's lives. And that always takes me back to determinism. I talk about life as if there's no free will and that everything's predetermined, everything's gonna happen a certain way. But all of the variables that everyone in this room, you're all gonna make a difference in your own little way. Um, so all I wanna say is keep the energy high, keep going out there, keep having the conversations, keep making a difference. And uh, it definitely is changing, the world's changing, it's getting better. But the reason I wanted to talk about my journey is because I come from a position where I was literally going across Europe getting hammered and I'm embarrassed about the kind of person I was. I'm embarrassed about the person I presented as when I had some conversations with people that were more enlightened or woke or whatever we want to call them. But I'm a different person now and what it took is it took some seeds to be planted, it took people to water those seeds and it took a lot of change to happen. Um, so yeah, keep your energy high, keep talking to people and if anyone's got any questions, feel free to ask. <laughs>